Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Got a quick video on suspension, the safety triangle, and when it's time to replace your suspension, perhaps a bit of what with. And of course, we're gonna to have to mention the dreaded coronavirus, because it seems people have totally lost the plot, but we'll get to that. Um, this suspension recently came out of a vehicle with about 150,000 Ks. I thought I'd use it as a good example, so, uh, doesn't bother me. Well, it does bother me a little bit. It doesn't bother me. That's not the word. It doesn't bother me when you replace your suspension, but it is a safety issue. So it's best explained in Monroe's terms. I like to use their example, the safety triangle. Okay. The triangle is tires, brakes, and shockers. Now, obviously your tires, you can see where they're important. They grip to the road. If you've got uneven wear or old hard rubber deteriorated, uh, it's worn down so it can't cut through the water you're going to be aquaplaning so you can maybe understand how important tires and tire pressures are because that's all about your grip to the road right so you know that's important yeah and your brakes you need those to work because when you need to slow down no brakes well unless you're going uphill you don't slow down real quick do you so you need your brakes working so you probably understand that's fairly important most people like when it comes to brakes i'm not touching it i'm going to take it to the experts people that know what they're doing well you know my the deal on that <laughs> good luck but anyway, brakes are pretty straightforward. Um, it's not as scary as it sounds. I'm not suggesting people go and do their own brakes, but we're not talking about that at the moment. The third part is, so you've got your tires gripping to the road, you've got your brakes stopping, but then your vehicle is sprung. It's on springs. What do springs do? Springs bounce. You add weight, it goes down. You take it away, it goes up. Boing, boing, boing. You know, go down the park, take the kids down the park. They've even got the old cool springs from the back of a a vehicle you know under some of those you know what are they called seesaws yeah seesaw i think it is yeah and um basically springs can just bounce uncontrollably so the job of this suspension or shock absorbers or struts or whatever you want to call it right coil overs whatever the many different terms keep it simple let's call it shock absorbers they are really all shock absorbers here okay so its job is, it's pretty simple, isn't it? What did I just say? Shock absorber. So what does it do? So when you hit a bump or a pothole or whatever, and the vehicle drops or right, whatever happens, the spring, of course, it wants to go boing, boing, boing. And what happened? If that happened, your wheel's going to be um, either lifting or lowering and just um, inconsistent with the amount of weight and contact to the road. So besides not being safe because... Um, you know, your wheel may not be in contact with the road correctly and, and increasing your stopping distance and handling that sort of thing. Um, besides that, what was I trying to, what was it? Ah, I've just lost it again totally. So there's no script here, but it, whatever, besides nothing, that's it, okay? So if it doesn't work, if it's not dead, it's controlling that spring, okay? So, and of course, that's where it comes into There's heaps of different types of suspension you can get. Um, you know, a bit tighter, looser, whatever, different sort of, you know, materials, the amount of fluid in there, the materials things are made of and all that sort of thing. So that's another story. What I want to point out is Monroe, again, we'll go back to Monroe. They recommend, right? They say experts, them themselves, recommend you replace this sort of gear every 80,000 Ks. Okay. Now, Let's just take into account, of course, they want to sell your stuff, of course. So let's take that little bit into account, whatever. So maybe there's a little bit more life left in it. It all depends on quality. So again, it's like my injector thing. Seven years, 170, it's a guide. It all depends on the age of the vehicle, the age of the injectors. What, you know, what, what injectors are they? What vintage are they? Are they originals or are they the latest ones that might and are seem to last longer, but give us some more time to confirm that. You know, so there's a few variables there. Um, one of them is obviously if you've got cheap poor quality suspension something from a cheap manufacturer that got something made to a budget I'd suggest they're going to be pretty average as soon as you drive out the door but these days the quality's up there and everything you drive out the door with is going to be okay but some of it's not going to last as long as other stuff this stuff I believe is really good quality so it says Tokiko Japan right it's made in Japan it's quality okay so Toyota obviously it's what it's maybe it's a Toyota company or they make it for Toyota. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with the ownership of that company that makes the suspension. If it's a Toyota company or part Toyota or just someone they engage to manufacture. But I believe it's good stuff. What we don't like about it, I'm just going to point out, is how small this is and how there's only two little spot welds each side of it like that. Because 
they can end up depending on the use of the vehicle you know it depends if you're on the sand dunes doing jumps and stuff like that but um, you don't have to be doing that and they can fail those welds can break after a lot of corrugations uh, those rods at the bottom they can bend so the aftermarket stuff is a big improvement in most cases okay so that's the main improvement in reliability that I look for in these front struts the rears these rear shockers, I don't really have those. I don't really have a problem with those. I don't have a problem at all. The lengths are pretty good. Um, the travel's not bad. You could go a little bit more, but it's not bad, okay? Uh, so 150,000 Ks, kind of a bit too long, but not really. This is an on-road vehicle. You can probably get to about 150. Now, when I say get to about 150, there's people sitting back going, oh, you know, my car's done 280,000 Ks. It's on the original stuff. I guarantee you, the ride's terrible. It's hitting on the bump stops and you're doing damage to the rest of the bushes in the vehicle. This is the worst part. You're doing damage to the rest of the vehicle. Well, what do I mean? Because it's not controlling and it's bouncing around so much and hitting the bump stops, that's hitting the control arms, the control arm jump board on, but I am going bang, bang around all over the joint and it's putting stress on all those other rubber bushes and that, like your lower control arm bushes, funnily enough. Now, vehicles we see that have had raised more heavy duty suspension because the spring's firmer and the shockers are better, there's more control, there's less flex in those bushes and therefore they seem to last longer. So there's a little advantage of a suspension upgrade. Um, what would I say? Look, with a lot of cars, you should stick to about that 80,000K thing, you know, the old Fords and Holdens. Oh, they don't make those anymore, do they? Or kind of, somewhere, for now. But look, the quality of Japan-made stuff, okay, it's second to none, in my opinion, okay? You've got your, there's lots of different areas where cars are made and all that sort of thing. Your Japanese brands, you know, never remember Jap crap? Never used to be the case, you know, but I think Mitsubishi's really uh, gave Jap crap their name. Um, Hondas, Toyotas, Mazdas, Subarus, stuff like that. Really good vehicles. And you know Toyota's my favourite. That's why I choose to work on those. And we've narrowed it down to our most popular vehicles because, yeah, there's only one of me. I can't do everything. That's why I choose to work on what I work on because I can. Now, so 80,000 Ks, good guide. If you've got good suspension lock in these Toyotas, it is good quality gear. You just really need to suss it out, right? You need to do the bounce test. You need to let your professionals check your suspension for you. If you've got any little leaks or sweats happening, these are generally really dry, but you can see this one, it's been damp all the way to the bottom. See, this one's got a more of a dry finish and that's more of a wet. I'm not gonna to touch it because no need to get, trying to operate this camera thing in a minute. So we don't wanna get all, uh, get, get our hands dirty. But you can see one's been, I wouldn't call it a leak, it's not dripping off the bottom, but it is a leak, so it is what it isn't. Um, when you push it down, it doesn't come back up in a hurry, maybe after half an hour, an hour. So there's no gas left in it, so it is a leak, it's not working well. What does that mean when there's no gas? Well, when you get on the rough stuff, you know, it aerates all your fluid and stuff anyway. So without getting too much into detail, bada bing, don't hang on to your suspension for too long. Now tyres you can see the wear with your eyes, brakes you can see the wear with your eyes. A lot of the time you can't see the wear on these items with your eyes. You can see those leaks there, you can see the sweat, even those have got a bit of a sweat up underneath that dust boot. Um, the bushes are really good, top quality bushes in these genuine things, that's another reason I like them. See how good they stay? 150,000 Ks, okay? You know, they're just awesome. And that's what I see from the Dobinsons gear as well. Not so impressive from a lot of other brands. Another reason why I do like and choose to use Dobinsons. Now, this isn't about that though. This is just giving you the averages of when you should replace them. Now, if you think about it, when you do an off-road trip in the outback and you do a lot of hundreds and thousands of Ks of corrugated roads, in a day you've kind of put that suspension through the pain and suffering of what this stuff's probably done on the road in 100,000 Ks because it's mainly been on the road. Now, that may not be a good example. Just have a think about it is what I'm saying. You're really punishing it. But so, what are we gonna do? Replace suspension after every trip? What, every 20,000 Ks of everyone? Not gonna happen, mate. People haven't got money to burn. So, it's important to choose something that's decent quality that hopefully lasts just as good or longer. Um, we do see some stock suspension that's done a bit of work. It obviously does wear quicker than this and it doesn't last this long. Doesn't mean it's not still in a vehicle. Because it's in your vehicle and you're driving on it, doesn't mean it's lasted, okay? Just means you don't know about it or you haven't changed it yet. Um, far superior ride on um, upgraded suspension. A little bit of height gives you a bit more clearance for a lot of things. Um, obviously, uh, water crossings a little bit, clearance on tracks, because most people are running a two inch lift, so if anyone's been in ruts and spinning the wheels and digging it down, 
then that's the average depth of some ruts in some places. Of course, you've got your crazy places where there's people on bigger tyres and dug it deeper, and um, then they blame the people with all terrains that have only got 31s. But I just can't understand how they don't understand 31s can't dig it that deep. But anyway, they can argue that one out with someone else. That's another story again, isn't it? So suspension, really important. So look, I'd probably say every five years, if you haven't done the kilometres, every five years, um, kilometres wise, okay, if you're on the highway doing lots of highway Ks on the blacktop, there's a good chance you might, you know, you could do 200,000 Ks in three or four years if you're doing that sort of kilometres and it's going to be okay. You don't need to upgrade and waste money on upgraded suspension if you're driving up and down the highway, wherever, right? Now, if um, you're doing a lot of tracks, rough stuff now, if you say, let's say for example around Melbourne or Brisbane or Sydney and you get on the tracks on the weekend, going on rough tracks for a few hours, you know, up this for 10 minutes and then up a track you're in low range, going slow, stretching a leg and all that sort of thing, that's not what really wears your suspension, okay? I'm talking corrugated rough dirt roads is what's really going to cook things and that's where, if you're going to do a lot of that, that's where you need to, it's worth spending a bit more and get something a little bit better. But like I said, this video is not about that. I hope that helps you with you know, your suspension, understanding a little bit what its job is, how it works. Um, the rears work quite well because they've got a, quite a capacity there, but the fronts, you know, it's independent suspension. They do, these two here, they do quite a bit of work and there's not as much capacity. So they're the ones that really get cooked. But these two here, obviously, um, they, they just work really well. But of course they're leaking. It's just a typical wear and tear. They are a wear and tear item. Safety triangle, tires, brakes, shockers. Generally, you can't see the wear. It looks okay. It's not okay, it's worn. It wears slowly, similar to your injectors. You don't notice it as it's getting worse. When you put the new ones in, whether it's shockers or injectors, you go, wow, isn't that better, usually. Okay, so that's about it on suspension. Now this coronavirus thing, I'll tell you what, mate, what is the matter with people? Seriously, okay? This all started weeks ago with people stockpiling toilet paper and we're all sitting back having a laugh going, what are these people doing? They're still going. Even today, there's people out there putting and the supermarkets are allowing it to happen now i get the supermarkets point of view there's an abundance of food people there's no shortage of food it will get to you you're not going to die settle down stay calm stay calm take a breath just relax okay you've got food in your cupboard and there's more out there okay this is the problem it's a snowball effect someone starts it the next guy the next guy and it just goes on and then people like you and me i know you're not doing it i'm not doing it eventually it's kind of the natural thing that you're going to sort of start to get worried about oh you know what you know whatever so you sort of everyone joins the bandwagon just stop just stop stay calm relax stay home don't go to the shops they're all the people that have got the coronavirus you want to get it you know they've cancelled events okay they're cancelling all these events right maybe it's an overreaction we're not going to talk about that right it's what it is okay so there's no point us caring or having an opinion whether they should or shouldn't have because they do what they do it is what it is just be happy with it make the most of it right so that's the first point i like to make it is what it is now if they're going to cancel events they must see it as that important to cancel that event that you don't go to the event at the supermarket the supermarket's an event as well right germ city mate everyone going through the same passing it to that person working there Right? Passing it to the person and then they're going to pass it back to you, whatever, right? A few facts as we understand them. You know, the coronavirus, it can live on surfaces eat for up to nine days, okay? This is, you know, supposedly proper information come through, let's say seven days, because another, someone else that did some training got told up to seven days, okay? On surfaces, anything you touch, right? Could be on your hands. Treat it like you got it on your hands. You touch your face, put your hands in your mouth, eat food, you get sick, okay? Now, I don't care about your hygiene, whatever, just don't bring it near me if it's bad, but what I'm trying to say is what people have always said, wash your hands. And there's some people out there going, oh, I have reaction, you know, what about, you know, the whole handshake thing, right? Don't shake hands, get out, man, again, handshake. Biggest way to spread germs, okay? Now, we don't want to be sort of anti-social and whatever, but can't we just do less of that or just stop that just for a while? Because if it's worthwhile cancelling events, that's a big effect, right? It's really easy to not shake hands. It's really easy to keep a metre. They say one to two metres distance to keep a distance. Stay in open spaces. Don't go in closed, confined spaces if you don't have to. Like a supermarket fighting over toilet paper and pasta and whatever else, right? You know, we just, we just want to go camping. When we go camping, we need things like toilet paper, 
you know. We don't need a lot. A few rolls, though, you know. Probably got enough already, you know. We haven't been able to purchase toilet paper for two weeks. We haven't tried too hard either because we're okay. We've got a few rolls there, and we know there's people, our neighbours, that have probably got heaps. So if it gets that desperate, we're going to come knocking on doors, all right? So all those people that took the trolley loads, we're coming your way when we need toilet paper. If everybody can just settle down, spread the word, people are making it worse than what it is, harder than what it is, you know, calm down. You know, one pack of toilet paper is fine. Today, people are still putting trolley loads of toilet paper, okay? It's ridiculous. How much toilet paper do you need? And they're still leaving with toilet paper, no food. You know, if you don't eat, you don't, and then you don't need toilet paper. So, calm down, take a breath. Take a breath, and that's it. You just need to calm down, relax, stay clean. You can go crazy with sanitizer if you want, but you know, wash your hands properly, soak a good lather, 10, 20 seconds, you know, kill those germs. Shower twice a day, put clean clothes on. Go jump in a swimming pool, it's chlorinated, then you are sanitized, apparently, okay? That's what the experts said. Um, what else can I tell you? Stay calm, you know, reduce, the thing is, right, you know, there's people going, oh, well, you know, it's nothing, it's just mild symptoms. And that's what some of the information being passed through with the, the same people that say it lives on surfaces for up to seven days are also saying masks are useless, okay? Masks are useless, right? Unless it seals all the way around the edges and you virtually can't breathe, it's not going to help you whatsoever. If you're sick, stay home. Simple, right? If you're sick, stay home, right? Mask is useless. Wash your hands, right? Wash your hands 100 times a day or whatever. The point is, it's not an overreaction. The not handshaking, it's not an overreaction. What it is, is you might be all fit and healthy and you're going to be okay, but think about some other people. This has killed tens of thousands of people around the world and there's plenty more to come, unfortunately, okay? But you can do your part by washing your hands or not shaking hands with someone isn't a big inconvenience like other things are. So if we're going to do things that are a big inconvenience, how about we do the small things that aren't an inconvenience, okay? So let's not say it's an overreaction to not shaking hands. Let's stamp out that number one way of the biggest spread of germs to do our part for people other than ourselves. It's not about me, okay? What about your parents, okay? I don't know, elderly people, people are already sick, you know? When these people get it, this is what's going to happen. You might think you're cool shaking hands with everyone still, but when someone gives it to you, you might be okay. But are you going to, do you know you've got it? Are you going to pass it to your parents or your friends' parents or someone you know? Whatever, whatever the case may be. You know, you want to go out. Do you, I hope you get what I'm saying. Don't overreact. It's all cool. Don't go shopping. Whatever you do, don't go shopping. Stay away from the shops, okay? And if you've got to go to the shops, have your list of your basic things, one of each, right? Get in there, get it, and get out. Don't browse around. Don't be rude. Don't shove people out of the way or whatever. People are losing the plot. Stay calm. If it looks too busy, leave. Go to another shop. Wait till later. Let everyone else get queue up first thing in the morning. Don't go first thing in the morning. Go in the afternoon when the shelves are empty and take what's left, okay? I'm sure you'll survive on what's there, okay? Short term, there's plenty of food. The warehouses are full of food. They can just keep bringing it out forever and your house is overflowing with food. It isn't going to save your life because you're probably not going to die anyway, okay? But some people will, unfortunately. Please be considerate of others. Keep yourself in check, guys. All right, thanks for watching. I just had to throw that in there as well. If you watched it till the end and you got the coronavirus talk, I'll be interested to see some comments there on this video regarding either the suspension, bada bing, or this coronavirus and people losing the plot. We just need everybody to stay calm, all right? Stay calm, be happy, be healthy. Here, here's another little tip, eat healthy. Okay, boost your immunity. Get don't over exercise, but don't be lazy. Get some exercise each day. Go for a walk two, three, four times a week for half an hour. That's your exercise. Go for a swim if you can. Chlorinated pool. Safe to do so. Preferably be outside, not inside. Right? Chlorinated pool. Well, generally, so depends where you go, doesn't it? Okay. Ride your bike. Get some exercise. Healthy foods. Right? Immune boosting foods. Right? You know what that is? It's all mainly plant-based foods, believe it or not. I'm not the dietitian expert that's going to tell you that. Go and eat your spinach. Go and eat your turmeric and your ginger and your... I don't know, uh, what else is there? What was the other thing I was forgetting? Um, heaps of stuff. Cinnamon, whatever. I don't even know. 
tomatoes, carrots, broccoli. Broccoli is big on all the healthy foods anyway. Go and eat that, but you know, I shouldn't have told you that, should I? Anyway, like I said, you guys aren't doing this, so it's cool. So you just go and buy one thing of broccoli, you know, and you go again in a few days and get another one, whatever, you know, in and out, you know, you don't fill your trolley with broccoli or toilet paper. You just get one pack. If you don't need it, you don't worry about it, like us, okay? We've looked when we go shopping to get the things we need, and there's never any toilet paper there, okay? Guess what? People can, there's toilet paper around. And if you're stuck at home, you don't need toilet paper because you've got a shower, even better. Toilet, shower. Okay, you get it? You only need toilet paper if you go camping. Or if you go to work, because you haven't got a shower there. If you go out and, you know, whatever. Places out, you need paper, right? At home, you don't need paper. Anyway, I hope you found it at least educational. A little bit entertaining, maybe, because it's just ridiculous. Everybody needs to stop. I'm sure all you guys are all calm, relaxed, take a breath. The only thing that annoys me a bit is, you know, like I said, uh, we, we do a number of trips, you know, on and off. So every, every now and then, so in a couple of weeks, I might be away for a little bit. So I'll just mention if you're after any parts, hit me up this week ASAP as soon as you see this video. Um, this is like, you know, the last half of March. So this week, so. You want, to, you want to hit me up, I guess it must be around about the 15th, that week, 15, 16, 17, 18, those sort of dates for your parts, and then it's going to be pretty well after Easter. You know, it'll be around, but I'm taking a break, you know what I mean? We've got a little trip, plus I'm taking a break. We can do some parts, but if you're going to be urgent and you can't wait, get onto it that week. Um, the part I find annoying is, I just want to go, when we do these remote trips, we need things like, you know, some cans of soup and baked beans, and probably noodles and tuna and cans of, can, a lot of canned food. And we look like idiots if we're going to go, I don't even want to go shopping at the moment because people are going to think we're all part of this hysteria. You know what I mean? Anyway, luckily we keep a small stock, a few things like that. So we'll be right. And you know what? If we have to, we'll live off the land, right? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bada bing, bada boom.